special episode where we are here to discuss season four of of all things those stranger things um i am your host and jeff gallishaw as always of unfinished business television and with me as always is axel foley otherwise known as andre joseph of aj epics so, uh, okay, other than the white supremacist symbol you're flashing, <laughs> uh, um, we will talk about uh, Stranger Things this season, or season four of Stranger Things, which I like to think of the unmade, very long version of sequel of A Nightmare on Elm Street, almost. Because yeah. that is pretty much what this season resembles. You know, obviously from the fashions to any fan favorite is... Um, okay, this season has a lot of, uh, revelations. Will's gay, <laughs> if you couldn't tell. <laughs> um, but not a stereotypical because of that bad haircut. Oh. Uh, you know, um, they finally found something to do with Charlie Heaton's character. Uh, you know, with him and Eduardo, I believe, Eduardo uh, Sanchez? Mm. I think, yeah, they, yeah. They become the Cheech and Chong of this season, <clears throat> except when things need to get serious. And um, their their uh, co comedic relief is welcome, since this season is determined to be super serious. Um, the return of the man on this show who is a favorite, Matthew Modine, as the villain. Paul Reiser even shows back up. Um, we start off with Eleven in California. And she is not very popular. <laughs> you know, she's the school weirdo. And Will ain't helping, but then it doesn't seem like Will's all that cool either. Um, she can't use her powers really against the villains. And she's been telling her boyfriend that she's so popular, so cool. And then when he comes out, he sees the truth and she's all embarrassed. But she doesn't have time to be embarrassed because she gets kidnapped by Mr. Paul Reiser. <laughs> Uh, um, because they need her because there's been another portal open and this season we are introduced to what will be the ultimate villain that has been behind the scenes always a Mr. Vecna is, who is played by another pale British or Canadian actor <laughs> um, but the big thing this season is Eddie uh, a fan favorite character who is the most down to earth character in this series. Um, and, you know, his romance with, I forget the cheerleader's name, who goes in for drugs. Yeah. And then what ends up happening? I don't remember her name. Uh, and, you know, that's kind <laughs> of your lead that this is a kind of nightmare on Elm Street because she's having troubles when she goes to sleep and having these nightmares that ultimately kill. And Vecna feeds off of all of these characters' guilt. And we have even have a cameo by Mr. Robert England in this, just to make it turn full circle. Um, as always, they don't know what to do with the black characters. <laughs> so, um, you know, my man Lucas is just like, oh, I used to date Max, but I'm on the basketball team. Really? <laughs> and he still has nothing to do except, oh, Max, I really still care about you. And introduce his sister, who is an all-American for no real reason. And well, that's really Lucas. I mean, there's other black guys on the basketball team, but they seem more like victim, eventual victims. For the true villain of the season, whatever the cheerleader's boyfriend is, who wants to start this whole lynch mob yeah. to kill Eddie, uh, uh, really because he thinks his girl was cheating on him, and that's the real only reason. And, you know, who basically looks like he just really doesn't like black people, <laughs> you know, because he's always picking on them. And he's so betrayed by Lucas being true to, oh, my God, his friends he knew before he joined the team is, um, look, I know I'm being sarcastic through all of this, 
But this was a very solid season. I, I give it that. It seemed like they were more focused this season. Like they actually knew what they were doing. Whereas before it just seemed like, oh, the fans like this. So we should do this for them. Um, I like that Winona Ryder and them are in a totally separate move, uh, show and movie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, David Harbour showing his violent night weight loss in this role. Uh, they give Brett Gelman something to do <laughs> as the newspaper reporter. Bring him back because we need somebody who speaks Russian. Mm. And Winona Ryder finally, at least to me, showing her sexiness again. And, and she doesn't seem dazed and confused by everything that's happening. Um, Andre, what did you think of season four of Stranger Things? Well, I definitely will say this, that for a summer that was pretty lackluster when it came to theatrical releases, this film, uh, not even film, but (laughs) the entire fourth season down to that epic finale, it felt like one gigantic summer blockbuster, and I was not disappointed. I thought, yes, the inclusion of Eddie, he was really awesome, and you know, the you had that suspicion somebody was going to go, and everybody thought maybe um, I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, Steve, everybody oh. thought Steve was going to go, and then they kind of twisted out on its head. So thankfully, that didn't happen. Um, you could say maybe there was a downside with the scattering of characters, with you know, eleven on one side. You have. Um, Finn Wolfhard's character, you know, trying to get back to her and the brother. Then you have David Harbour in the Russian prison, well, Hopper being in the Russian prison, dealing with that situation. And then everything else that happens in uh, in Indiana, in Hawkins. So, you know, that's where maybe one aspect of it is a little bit weak. But the rest of it, the Nightmare on Elm Street motifs, the use of Kate Bush's running up the hill, and so much of the just the intensity level of where it started the series to now you can tell now like the innocence part is done the homages to the goonies and all the spielberg movies now it's taking it to another level where the the stakes are real people can go it's getting more violent and even those sequences like when the, the army comes and they shoot up went on a writer's house to the whole part with Eleven trying to escape the base and, you know, with Matthew Modine's ultimate demise, this feels big. This feels like they spent some money to get this right. And I don't think there was any expense left on the table to cheapen it. This was really amazing. And just hands down, like it it gets me excited for now we're getting into like the end game of the story. So Overall, I I just really thought it was amazing. I don't know if I would say it's the best season, but it was enjoyable. Um, I like that this show has a tendency to kill off fan favorite characters. <laughs> you know, we had um, what was our first season? Barb. Barb. Uh, we killed her off. This season, uh, they're saying if they would have known the cheerleader was going to be so ca- uh, popular, they wouldn't have killed her off so fast. Mm. And obviously, everybody's still crying about Eddie, or at least the actor's portrayal of Eddie, you know. Um, the shootout was uh, one of the big things this season, because it reminded me kind of of a similar action sequence that was used on True Detective, where it all looked like it took place with one take, and that yeah. was impressive. Um, I was upset. Why the brother got to be uh, the snitch <laughs> in the end? under threat of torture and why the black military guy got to be the ultimate villain mm-hmm. is like, really? <laughs> but I mean, at least more black faces on the show. Right. Um, I agree with you. I think it lost something in separating each of the characters, but it also at least gave other characters who normally don't have much to do something, you know, you have like, uh, Will, not Will, uh, Will, Will Finhard's character, uh, his He's sister. forgetting his name. Yes, we cannot think of this guy's name, his character. But Natalia Dyer's character has more more to do, and she bonds with Robin, played by Maya Hawke. Who I like. She's she's yes, I like both of them, and I like that Maya Hawke's you know kind of dorkish character gets a little more play. Whereas last season she was Miss Cool. Here we see how more awkward her character is, and especially with the crush. 
And which I, in a reversal of Sweet 16, I'm like, you're hotter than her. How are yeah. you <laughs> around her? It's like, okay, but you know, it's a script. So I'll accept it. Um, you know, I like, oh God, since we keep blank, why is Lucas and Will the only characters' names I remember? <laughs> I'll just say too, like th this was definitely a season where I felt like I was more emotionally invested with the characters than the last few. And I, I mean this from like, 11 getting bullied in school and then the ultimate comeuppance when she takes those skates and whacks the girl over the face with it. That was awesome. Um, yes, Maya Hawke's character's interest in the Molly Ringwall looking girl, like you, you root for that. And I know you say like Lucas has nothing to do, but I'll admit I was rooting for him when he had to kick the white kid's ass. No, that's not hard for yeah. anybody to root to kick that kid's ass. Um, I like that they're involving his sister more in the stories. Mm -hmm. Um, I, this isn't meant to be insulting, but I felt like Sadie Sink finally got her moment to shine this season, yeah. especially in the episode that is built more all around her character. And I mean, uh, this is no insult to Millie Bobby Brown, because considering how many episodes have always been centered around 11, but I felt like, I don't know if it's due to the writing or the performance, but I felt like Sadie Sink had more depth in her scenes yes than millie or 11 has ever really had during the four seasons altogether mm -hmm. so again i don't know if that's performance or writing wise because you have more to do you you can build max up because she has a history of like happy memories and then you know she moved to this town and then everything went to shit and then, you know whereas 11 is like it's patchy her past it is so you don't have anything to really build too much with when you're dealing with a mystery well say six characters more relatable that's really what it comes down to that's true and i also give it that i really think uh, the kid who plays dustin also really had a good season yes he did he had his awesome. chance to die. Cool. and you know now he has his little internet girlfriend whose home life is fucking Oh God, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm still like, huh? <laughs> what the hell was that? But it was like a nice welcome comic interlude, you know, smoking uh Eduardo Sanchez's character, smoking up with the girl's sister while they're mm. trying to break into the computer and all that. So I like his addition, uh, you know, his character's kind of addition. I don't know how vital he's gonna be in the future, yeah. but he worked uh for what he will was I of course I'm like everybody else I loved Eddie's character <laughs> you know um this was supposed to be his year uh, you know um I never got Dungeons and Dragons so I can't say anything about yeah, that Yeah I was never a big Dungeons and Dragons guy You know um I remember the cartoon <laughs> that's about as deep as I go And that's I remember the Marlon Wayne's movie No I didn't see that thing no, And I I remember the video game uh, but I never played you know the board game um, I like that this was, even though this was a season, it ended on a cliffhanger. So this only feels like part one, eh, you know, the whole season, right. like part five will be part two and the conclusion. But I like that. I like that the finally, the fucking citizens of this town are kind of realized, like, Hey, shit's fucked up here. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, again, black sheriff, come on. He got to be incompetent. <laughs> uh, um, I said a nightmare on Elm Street. I like that this brings everything back to the beginning again, too. You know, like when it was, I forget what the, when uh, the brother was possessed by the spirit, what that spirit's name was and all that with the mall and everything. Yeah. Like you oh, said. Really? Yeah. But what was the name of the villain? And like oh, the spirit or whatever was coming from it. But, like, I like that that was tied in so his death wasn't in vain. Because I feel like that was kind of the weakest season, at least as far as a villain, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I like the modern touches of, you know, them finally being teenagers. But other than that, it was like, ugh. And that dude with that weird mustache. <laughs> I like that this season there were real casualties. Yeah. <laughs> Not just like, oh, you could tell that guy's going to die, uh, you know, and people are actually noticing. And like you said, this is this is like it. This is where childhood ends. Yeah. This is where you guys are growing up and and kind of like at least even in the early season, even though they were sci fi, it was kind of you still had that child sense of wonder. Now we are dealing with you're in adulthood. 
you know, your mind has to be made up. You can't go into daydreams of everything's going to be all right unless you contribute to the situation. And so I like that about, uh, you know, this season. Um, again, the Russian trip was like a nice little side note, fun little adventure. You know, finally, it looks like, you know, uh, Winona Ryder and what's his name are going to get together and maybe mm-hmm. reveal their feeling. But also, it doesn't seem like he's as much of a blowhard as he's been in seasons past, like through all that torture and weight loss. You know, his character seems a little more all-knowing and deeper. So I'll give yeah, it to... Yeah, I think the prison um, changed them. Yeah, well, it changes everybody. <laughs> you know. Um, and even making that, like, Russian guard kind of heroic eventually. Uh, you know, um, I guess they just like Brett Gelman because really, he doesn't need to be there, but it works <laughs> with him there. Maybe more of the comedic relief. Um, still... Every other body's parents are still unbelievable on this show. You know, like, what's his name? The character who we can't think of his name. Is, <laughs> like, his mother, who almost was thinking of having an affair with Billy. Oh, yeah. Like, she still reacts like, really? All this shit's going on and that's what you're worried about? And his father, who always just reads the paper and doesn't like any of the other kids. Yeah, it's just like, really? Like, they're not a little more interactive? Other than talking about what's Dustin eating all their food. <laughs> like, we barely even see Dustin's mother <laughs> this yeah. season. You know? Um, one, of my, one of my favorites, since she was on um, Orange is the New Black, is one of the guards. And here is, like, in a totally different role. Um, I, we talked about Will's hair. Oh, here's a fan theory I found online that even kind of more hits home. When Will comes... <laughs> Not literally. Uh, <laughs> um, when they're at the skate park and all that, it's Will's birthday. And the writers know the show bring it up. Because oh, yeah. they, they note the date, but nobody says anything. And if you watch obsessively previous seasons, you'll know the date of Will's birthday. And that's it. And maybe that's a little bit more why he also was crying. Other than you're worried about 11. What about me, man? You didn't see excited to beat me. I made you a fucking Peyton, bro. <laughs> you know how many hours? All Max does is make weird fucking uh, calls to you and smooches. It's, you know, well, Will's always the most picked upon character here. It's, uh, um, I feel like if they're going to kill anybody, they're going to kill Will. <laughs> I don't know. You think he's going to survive till the end? Mm. So, like I said, somebody's going to go because the way the show is going and how it's going to ultimately end, I think you have to have something happen that affects everybody as they start to grow up beyond this show. Um, as long as Lucas and his sister live, I will be happy. I don't think they'll kill <laughs> Lucas. Um, I think Steve and uh, uh, the brother, uh, both uh, guys who were in an Italian Dyer's character, I see them both. One of them's going to have to go. I think the brother, not Steve. Well, Steve's got more. Oh, he has more scenes. Seems more useful in the series overall. Like in the first season, the brother was useful, but then it was like the writers like, I don't know what the fuck to do with him. <laughs> well, not only that, but Steve got more popular with the girls, you know, and well, they just, the other guy had like a coke problem or something. Well, he well, <laughs> Steve's more understanding of lesbians, <laughs> so. You know, and strangely, him and Robin make a good team because he's the dumb one. She's the smart one. So I say we might rewrite a romantic comedy uh, (laughs) with the two of them, but they play best friends. And Well, you know, there's going to be a spinoff of something when this is. Well, because we must create universes now. And um, I I really don't want there to be one, but I'm sure there will be. Yeah, because they just like flat out world. end it like that. Hopper traveling the world looking for the supernatural. Maybe Hopper I, could be like the the uh, Repo Man looking kids from the second season. Who knows? <laughs> oh man, that would be that would be interesting. I'm all for it. I don't know if Millie Bobby Brown wants to be part of it after. I think she's five. done after this. She's gonna want to move on. Well, yeah, because you don't want to be typecast so early in your career. You know, you don't want to end up like uh, half these other child actors. Like, they never saw me in any other role. Which might have been why she was in, what was it, Godzilla? Yeah. And then- I want 
her to work with Elizabeth Perkins in a movie because they look like they're fucking related. Okay, I was about to say, if you were going to say alike, I was going to say, I don't see it. <laughs> they, they look alike, but I think they could be like, I don't know, mother and daughter or like young version, old version. So what you're saying is you want a remake of Big <laughs> starring them. <laughs> the female version. That'd be weird. <laughs> it's Hollywood. Weirder things have happened. We got Undercover Brother 2 starring Michael Jai White. Which there's an interview with him about, which is actually pretty hilarious. I'm like, I don't understand how Eddie Griffin was too busy. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> let's stay on. I feel like season five, I know this is the finale, but in the tradition of bringing 80s actors, recognizable actors back, you've got to throw in one. This is, this is going to be the finale. And I'm trying to think who they were. I mean, I, I wish there was more Robert England this season. That was like the other pet peeve I had. But I'm trying to think, like, who else has really left? Kane Hodder or, you know, I'm trying to think I, of something. I say we replace the guy playing the military guy with Tony Todd. And, That'd be fun, yeah. Which I don't understand how he didn't get the job in the first place. Or <laughs> or Keith David, uh, you know. It would be cool. It's not like they have to do action sequences. They're in charge. And they just have to give orders and be menacing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, we'll probably get somebody like Daniel Stern. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like as, <laughs> like as the town mayor who we've yeah. never seen before. no. We did see the town mayor when it was, who was the, the mayor before? Oh, Kerry Always? Yes. You know, this, he could be the new town mayor. Yeah. I'm not as corrupt as the other one. It's, you know, or, hey, since since you're in a mood to cast Pesci and everything, <laughs> Joe Pesci, hey, he was in Moonwalker. The, <laughs> the local Indiana mob. Is, He's like, yes, I got to get rid of these, ga these, these, these monsters. I, I got all the weapons you need. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I don't write these final seasons, but I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, is there any other track from this season you'd like to talk about that maybe we overlooked or didn't give enough you know, attention to? Not, I mean, just the, the death scenes going into the Upside Down for, like, the last two episodes. There was, like, sort of the it reference with the house. Um, the whole backstory with Vecna, which was interesting. So they had to, like, go back to, like, the Hawkins in the 60s or something like that. So that was interesting to see. Uh, Paul Rice's character flat out disappears. So I guess there's a cliffhanger where he ends up in the next season. I would uh, like him not to get killed. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope they don't kill him off, but who knows? This show is so random with deaths. You know? Well, since you and your Axel Foley, maybe he'll be on the set and be like, Bronson Pincho, you want to get started? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> hey, with Bronson Pincho. Um, any predictions for season five, other than us trying to guess who's going to get killed? <laughs> um. I think there's going to be a bigger villain than Vecna. Something else. You don't think Vecna is the ultimate? It... No, nah, I think there's going to be something because they got to go a little bit bigger, or he does something Thanos like to really become a bigger threat than he was this year. And I do think Max is going to come back somehow. She's just not going to be the same. You know, the if they if they wanted to kill her off, they would have killed her off. There's a reason they're keeping sure. her alive. Um. I don't think we're done with the pizza guy. He's going to come back in some fashion. And uh, yeah, you might see some old faces return here and there. I mean, I, I really, I, I'm wondering if it's going to still be in 1986 or if they're going to jump a year. Mm -hmm. I think you have to jump a year because the kids are going to look old anyway. Yeah, that's true. But I was going to say with all that, burning in the sky i don't know <laughs> they're gonna be like yeah we that happened for a year <laughs> that nobody reacted to it <laughs> um i think uh let's see the last season i'm trying to think i hope and well now that hopper's back i don't know he might be sheriff again instead of you know them having the black guy who did nothing um <laughs> i'm trying to think like no real predictions I think, like you said, I think Max is going to be part of a bigger story. We're going to lose some beloved characters, mm -hmm. of course. Um, you know, I feel like they're going to pull another 80 star out of nowhere. 
and who will play an important role. Um, the government's going to have something to do with all of this in the end. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's not like I'm like, oh, God, another season. But like I said, I really don't want a spinoff. Um, I like generally most of the actors on the show. Um, I feel like they're going to find a way to bring at least a cameo of Eddie back. You know, some flashback. Yeah, because I'm like, I think he was too beloved for them just to drop. But then again, I said the same thing with Barb and we see no cameo. We never got all other than her corpse. Exactly. So that's why I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like we, uh, the fans will demand it. Um, but at least, hey, the guy who plays Eddie, I'm sure he's going to be getting a lot of roles based off. Yeah. Of and he's hanging out with Metallica now. So he's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, are we going to reference somebody, uh, another 80s metal band next season or just a band? Since they helped Kate Bush's single go to number one. And, you, you know, know. remember, if, if they jumped to 1987, that was really like the last year where the 80s felt like the 80s before well, things started to get a little bit more uh, grittier. Yeah, you, before like alternative music started you taking over. Swing and, and yeah, we started getting into grunge a little bit. Things were starting to change at that point. It wasn't like colorful and poppy by like 88 and 89. I kind of feel like the last season is going to be like the Harry Potter films where, you know, it was playful at first, like, oh, Voldemort. But then the last films were like, no, this is us against them. You know, no more cutesy stuff on the side. I feel like that's how the last season is going to be. Yeah, like I said, we're we're done with all the Goonies and E.T. stuff. This is now going to be um, whatever, whatever, maybe Lost Boys. It's going to be that. Um, yeah, and it's uh, and it's. I think it's going to be more brutal and heartbreaking. And but you know, I I will say I, I try to go against it, but I am a Stranger Things fan. So and, oh yeah, no, I, I loved it when when you guys recommended it. That's when I got into it. Yeah, so I'm like I, I'll admit, uh, you know, I haven't agreed with every decision the show has made, yeah. but it has stayed strong. You know. Um, so, um, anything else you want to say about Stranger Things or this season in general? I just enjoyed the hell out of it, and I'm looking forward to the next one. I agree with you. So, that ends our business for this week. But as you know, there's always unfinished business. And if you're watching this before, or if it comes out before, happy Halloween! And- <laughs>